I get so excited when I start seeing the first signs of spring. And dandelions are popping up everywhere and the bees are just doing their thing. And even though I know better, I start getting that gardening itch where I have to plant something. Some of my perennials are already popping right back up like this absolutely beautiful oregano. And at this point, I still have several more weeks until my last frost date. So on days when it's tolerable outside, I'll go through my beds and do some much needed garden maintenance, like weeding. And going through and fixing all the beds that are completely foobar. Because despite my best efforts, the chickens still manage to get in here. So I'm just gonna snap off whatever's left that's dead. Then I'll top it off with compost until the bed is full again and try and get it leveled out the best that I can. And on the really cold days when the only reason that I'll go outside is to take care of the chickens and put the fear of God in them if they get in my garden beds again, I'll sit with a hot cup of coffee and start drawing up my garden plan for the season. I started doing this about three years ago and I will never go back. I start by doing a rough draft of my garden on graft paper, using each blue square as roughly one square foot. I also write down anything that I already have growing in these beds that is perennial, just so I don't accidentally plant over top of them while they're still dormant. Then I'll go through and make a list of everything that I want to plant based off of how much my family actually eats it. Almost like I'm writing a grocery list. I'll write down the top 10 vegetables that we would normally buy from the grocery store. I'm gonna try and keep my new plant list as close to 10 as possible. I'm gonna need y'all to wish me luck because I'm gonna need it. I know myself and once all the seeds come out, game's over. Realistically, there's no way in a million years I can plant each variety of everything that I have. So we have to start small. Going off of my list of 10, I'm gonna find whatever variety of that vegetable that I want to plant. And this is where the list really starts to grow. I'll grab a couple of our favorites and a couple new ones to try out. Then I'll cross-reference my list with a companion planting list to see what I can plant together. And again, the list grows because I have to add fillers. I do everything in pencil because this has already changed at least a million times before I've even started planting. Let's just say I've had a lot of really cold days and zero self-control. This ended up being nowhere close to scale, but I ran out of room on my paper. So I just kind of crammed it all on here. Nevertheless, I do have a ton of work to do. On each warm day, I go through one bed at a time and clear them out to reset for the next season. I rewrote my list and I know, I know, I have a problem. I did go a little over my original number of 10. In my defense, I did add everything that I already have planted that's perennial. However, I did have to add a couple more beds because I ran out of room. Every year, my garden expands just a little bit more. I haven't decided if I want these to be permanent yet or not, so I'm not gonna border them with any boards. I just did some simple mound rows to get me through the season. The base is just topsoil mixed with compost from the landscape supply store. Then I'll go through and just make a trench right through the middle of it that's about a foot wide, eight to 10 inches deep because most of the vegetables root systems that I'm planting are not gonna get much bigger than that and then I'll fill up that trench with a higher quality of compost. Everything on my list that is frost tolerant, I'm gonna go ahead and direct sow at this point. They'll come up when they're good and ready. I have way too much to plant and not very much time left. I trust nature to just do its thing with my peas, my carrots, etc. As for everything that's on my list that is not frost tolerant, I'm gonna start in cups inside. For the larger seeds, I do use a more coarse potting soil because they can handle it and it's a lot cheaper. Regardless of how much you're planting or however many varieties, always make tags. Trust me when I say you will not remember what all you planted. Even if your list was only, let's say, 10 things. Anything that comes out of the same packet is gonna get tagged immediately before I even move on to a different variety of the same thing. Not only does it help me keep track of what I've already planted, but it also helps me keep record of what does well and what doesn't. Like the Black Beauty squash has always done well for me, but I am very excited about this new container variety that I found that's supposed to be a heavy producer, but more compact. Since all my squash is gonna be grown in the greenhouse this year because I've just had it with the squash vine borers, we'll see how this one does. Hopefully they'll take up a lot less room. And after pressing the seeds down into the soil, 
I covered them up with a fluffier potting soil mixed with worm castings. And as always, with all of my successes, I'm gonna show you my failures too. Starting right here with this terrible, horrible, no good, very bad idea, where I fell sucker to great advertising. That's my rookie mistake number one. As I was walking through the hardware store, minding my own business, definitely not looking at more seeds, they had displays of these everywhere, all around the seeds. Sinks, sinks, I said sinks. And I thought, ooh, this would be good for my really tiny seeds. I can plant so many in such a tiny little space. 72 cells, heck yes. The greatest potting soil for the greatest results? Okay, rookie mistake number two. I have had really bad results with these in the past, but I thought with my green thumb, there's no way I can mess this up now. But I spoke a little too soon. Of course, the soil is super hydrophobic and I probably should have soaked it first and then put it in the cells. I read directions like a man. I don't. This is why it's important to test water retention before you plant. So I filled up the bottom tray with water hoping it would just soak up through. But after a couple of hours of letting it bottom soak and still wetting it from the top, it's still dry. I'm determined to make this work so I didn't just throw $9 in the trash. I dumped it all out into a bowl and I let it all soak overnight and then went through and just refilled each cell with what now seems to be moisture retaining. My son dropped some seeds into each cell and of course, as always, we labeled as we went. After about a week, we did notice some germinating, so we went ahead and put a fan on them straight away. The reason I always put a fan on my seedlings is because it imitates the wind. This helps the plants grow a thicker stem, which also makes hardening them off later a lot easier. Even though I had this tray in direct sunlight with a fan on it, the plants started looking really leggy, which is never a good sign. When everything that I planted in the four inch containers were coming up just fine and just as they should. And they're getting exactly the same amount of light as the 72 cell tray. Since I already started having my doubts, I went ahead and seeded everything else in the four inch containers using a container potting soil and a little bit of perlite. And I'm having much better results. These little cells dry out so fast, but if you keep a little water in the bottom of the tray, they stay too wet and the plants damp off and die. In fact, fast forward a couple weeks when I go and plant some things that are frost tolerant. The only thing that survived in this 72 cell tray is some very leggy spinach. So I will not be using these trays or the so-called best seedling starter mix ever again. I mean, sure, those seedlings could have tried a lot harder, but I'm not wasting any more of my time or money because it's hard not to take it personal. And the next time you see their displays, it can get you kicked out of a hardware store real quick. Just remember that even with a few mistakes, gardening is still cheaper than therapy, especially if it's court ordered. Kidding, kind of. But hey, sometimes you get zucchini, like these adorable little starts right here that are already ready to transplant into bigger pots. I'm just trying to make sure that the second seed that I put in here isn't gonna pop up right next to this guy. If this other seed happens to germinate, when temperatures start getting over 45 degrees outside during the day, I bring all my tender little seedlings outside to get that natural wind and sunshine. And this starts hardening them off very early. Less than two weeks until my last frost date, my peach trees are blooming like crazy. My snap peas are popping up left and right. We're already harvesting radishes and lettuce every day. I'm pulling up carrots anytime that we need them. Our nighttime temperatures are consistently around 40 or above. I mean, look at this soil just crawling with earthworms. I love it. I think nature's telling me it's time. The forecasted temperatures for the next two weeks look really great and we're fixing to get a ton of rain. So I'm gonna take a little bit of a gamble here, but I'm gonna go ahead and plant even the tenderest of annuals that I have. And tomatoes are the first ones going in. I mean, what's the worst that can happen? I am getting really good at starting over. But if things go the way that they're supposed to, I have a really big head start. All of these tomatoes needed to be separated and put into individual pots anyways to keep them from getting root bound. Might as well just go in the ground. Saves me even more time. Each day that goes by, I'm just grabbing another tray and planting it. I already know where everything goes because of the chart that I made. These are gonna be some happy cucumbers. I know that I push everything to its limits. And even though the package said not to, 
I went ahead and planted beans inside also. And they all germinated, so I'm gonna go ahead and plant them and we'll see how they do compared to ones that are direct sown. Texas has stupid weather, and if I wait around to plant everything until the soil temperature is 60 or 70 degrees, it's already so hot outside that everything either shrivels up and dies or it seriously struggle buses until the end of summer. I grew up in the mountains in Arizona where it rarely gets over 100 degrees and the nighttime temperatures, even during the summer, stay pretty low. That's the desert for you. But my gardens always did really well. So I decided, even though I planted really early, to hold off and post my spring video when I can show if it paid off or not. And oh boy, did it. So here's a little sneak peek into what my garden looks like right now. All of the new rows are doing fantastic. I mean, look at those potatoes. It's insane. Soil temperatures are still not even at 60 degrees and my garden is kicking ass. Very shortly, I will be posting a full garden tour video, so make sure you subscribe to our channel so you don't miss it. Don't believe everything that you read on a package. Experiment in your own ways. And as always, thank you so much for watching.